Hello and welcome back to law video number three, I think this is. And uh, I am your host, Silvermont, or Alex, and uh, I'm not really a host, but whatever, it's all good. And finally I get to talk about one of my favourite characters. Of course, I love all the Dark Souls characters in their own way, even Patches and Petrus. And Soler is one of my favourites. But this guy definitely takes the prize of coolest looking character, at least to me. Ridiculously badass golden armour with a styling red plume, a great looking lightning spear weapon and of course, a general lion slash leo theme that just accentuates how great he is. That said, he's only half of who we'll be talking about today, half of the duo that is, and whilst not as traditionally cool perhaps, there is something to be said of this hulking mass of muscle who intimidates not through instinctual and predatory fear, like his partner, but rather through brute force and through murky intent. I am of course talking about the Guardians Van Orlando, Dragon Slayer Ornstein and Executioner Smal. Dragon Slayer Ornstein, Guardian of the Cathedral in the Forsaken City of An Orlando. Ornstein is believed to be the captain of the Four Knights. His golden lion armour is imbued with the power of lightning. Smo, the executioner, protector of the cathedral at the forsaken city of Anorlondo. The majority of that we gather from our first encounter with them. O and S are what some people refer to as a skill check or a gear check in Dark Souls. Oh, so you beat Iron Golem, you beat Kalag, that's great, now there's this. And many players get stuck on them, and I've seen it myself. The boss I get asked to help the most with is by far Ornstein and Smo. Hell, of all the boss guide videos I made, the ONS videos have the most views by quite a large margin, which further backs that up. And a uh, fun fact, before Dark Souls came out, there was wild speculation for these two from the trailers they appeared in. I distinctly remember one thread dedicated to speculation regarding uh, who, who they could be. Back then, a lot of people, in that thread at least, assumed that Ornstein was female and uh, Smo was the male as a sort of king and queen double battle or maybe even something like a chessboard as they seem to think that but whatever anyway people were collectively messing their pants thinking it'd be like fighting two Alants at once that's a false king Alant or Alant however you want to pronounce it I'm gonna say Alant I digress though that has nothing to do with the lore They've been fan favourites though since before the game even came out, who can blame them? Ornstein in particular looks incredibly cool. But let's take a closer look at the pair, starting with Smo. First up, what's with the pronunciation of his name? I'm terrible with getting things like that right. Goff pronounces his name Goff, which means Smo could potentially be Smoth, but to be honest, I end up saying something different every time I say it. Like, I say Ornstein, then two minutes later I say Ornstein, but it's not that all that important. So let's just call him Smo or Smau or whatever I happen to say at the time. The more important part of his name is the executioner part, his title. But how cruel is an executioner who uses a hammer? Well, very. So what do we know about Smo? We know that he's an executioner, obviously, and we know that he he once, or maybe still, desired to be part of Gwyn's elite knights, but was precluded from doing so by his own cruel nature. To quote a, an item description, Smo loved his work and ground the bones of his victims into his own feed, ruining his hopes of being ranked with the four knights. That comes from the description of his hammer, and seeing that Ornstein is supposedly the captain of the four knights, this could have some interesting implications concerning their relationship. But what is Smo? Is he human? Giant? Something else? I'm going to touch on this more in a future video, Koth Siegmeier, but I'm of the impression that there are humans, such as the player character, who isn't, you know, he's human sized, even though he's an undead, blah blah blah, but we have humans, such as the player character and many NPCs, then we have another level of humanoids above that. Gwyn, Gwyndolin, Ornstein, Artorius, and so forth are amongst their number. Call them 
superhumans or gods or demigods or whatever, but they are larger than humans and the player character all the same. Then we have actual giants who are even larger. I think Smo is the same manner of humanoid as Ornstein and Gwyn. He's larger, yes, but I think that's simply because he's ridiculously buff, so to speak. He's not quite big enough to be a giant though. And there are arguments for either side. Example, he's big and his name is similar to Goth, and that means he could be a giant, but he's not actually giant sized and if you compare his anatomy with any other giants, he's quite a lot smaller, even though he's very big, comparatively speaking. The description of his armour says that it can be worn by a human, but not without great difficulty. Compare that with the description of the actual giant set. Due to its giant size, it is extremely heavy for humans and impedes stamina recovery. So it, you'd have to make up your own mind. But I do not think Smo is a giant, just a very big um, guy. <laughs> There's concept art of Smo floating around that shows that he isn't actually fat, like his armour is fat. But instead he's extremely muscular, and he'd have to be to hold a hammer that big. Which is rather interesting, no? He takes great delight in killing, it would seem, from the description of his soul, eerily gleeful executioner. Indeed, you can hear him laughing throughout the battle, strangely enough. And, uh, who does that remind you of? Well, if you've played Demon Souls, it might remind you of, uh, what they called the fat ministers, the fat officials. But, uh, they're fat, they're strong, and they laugh. So, it could be a parallel there, it could just be a reference, who knows. But, what of his relationship with Ornstein? I believe it's one of jealousy. Ornstein might have some respect for Smo's fighting ability, yet I believe Smo has little but derision for his fighting partner. The main evidence for this is that, should you defeat Ornstein first, Smo will actually finish the Dragon Slayer off, flattening him with his hammer and killing him. If you look carefully, you can see Ornstein's fingers moving, right up until Smo crushes him into, like, a peanut butter sandwich, only more dragony. Uh, yeah, compared to what happens if you beat Smo first, where Ornstein simply lays a hand on his body, maybe Smo is deeply vindicative against the captain of the knights, whose number he could never join. Highly likely, if you ask me. And what of their curious ability to absorb the power of the other? Is this something all of their number can do? Is it a unique blessing given to Ornstein and Smo? Or is one of them like Rogue from X-Men, able to absorb powers and stuff? Imagine if we had a boss battle against Ornstein, Artorius, Goth, and Kieran all at once. And as each fell, the power divided amongst the survivors, until eventually you could be fighting like Super Saiyan 4 Artorius, who's a giant lightning spewing parrying death machine. That's uh actually pretty scary. But let's move on to Ornstein. Dragon Slayer Ornstein. First up, his name. Is it a reference to Leo Ornstein? Could be, either way, not too important. It's clear that he's very lion themed, and as a Leo myself, I can totally support that. I like cats. As has been mentioned, I believe Ornstein is one step above humans and one step below gods a demigod, so to speak. If we look at his soul, it bears the description... Special beings have special souls. Lord Gwyn granted this soul to his four most trusted knights. Perhaps it is the soul itself that elevated Ornstein to being more than human. But, if he gave this soul to his four most trusted knights, that would include Kieran, who is the same size as the player, more or less, but, um, who knows, who knows. Uh, his title, as with Smo, tells us a lot about him. Dragon Slayer, Dragon Slaying, a knight's highest calling, according to Goth. And Ornstein is certainly equipped for the duty. Cross spear born from the soul of Ornstein, 
a dragon slayer guarding an Orlando Cathedral, inflicts lightning damage, effective against dragons. Two-handed thrust relies on cross, and buries spear deep within a dragon's hide, and sends human flows human flows human foes flying and when it says cross i it means the sort of cross guards type thing near the uh, beneath the blade interesting to note though it says a dragon slayer not the dragon slayer maybe orns led his own unit into battle against the dragons as goth likely did with his giant archers but we know that ornstein was very good at his job in anor londo in the great keep there's one room with two silver knights and full of mounted dragon heads, fondly known to fans as Ornstein's trophy room. Funnily enough, however, Ornstein is weak to fire damage. A dragon slayer, weak to fire. As the leader of Gwyn's knights, most likely, that would make Ornstein one of the highest ranking characters we encounter in Dark Souls, and suitably, one of the most powerful, even though he's not really that hard to fight, but <clears throat> we can assume that Ornstein led Gwyn's knights, whereas Havel led the clerics. We know Havel, or Harvel if you want to be silly, was a bishop, and a badass bishop at that. Bishop with a great hatred for Seath and magic in general sounds like a pretty cool guy to me. Hates magic and likes bashing things. And everyone likes bashing things. But why was he, Ornstein, supposedly the captain of the knights? Why not Kieran? Why not Goth? Why not Artorius? Indeed, Artorius certainly seems to be the most famous member of the knights, from what we can gather in game. He's also the hardest to beat in game, even if what we fight is an abyss powered up or powered down version. Maybe Ornstein was better suited to command. At any rate, he is the only surviving member we know of in the present day, so to speak. That is assuming what we fight isn't a mere illusion. That said, does Ornstein know what he is protecting is nothing more than an illusion? Why is he protecting Guinevere? Out of respect and love for Gwyn? Or Gwendolyn? Or Guinevere herself? And what could he think of Smo? The way he places a hand on Smo's body to absorb his powers seems to indicate that he has at least some respect for his companion. Maybe just his fighting ability, who knows. But either way, more than Smo has for him. But is it honourable to fight two on one, assuming the player has no summons? What could that tell us about Ornstein's chivalry? Is he the sort of king's guard that would do an evil if it meant doing his duty? Does he not care about playing fair as long as he wins? Who knows? I can't help but think it's almost quite sad. Once captain of the four highest ranked knights in the realm, famed for your dragon slaying prowess, and now the last of your brethren, reduced to nothing more than a glorified guard, protecting an illusion in a twilight city.